Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be working through enlargement of shapes. Now this is quite a tricky concept, so there are 15 examples here, work through nice and slowly. There is no rush for you to get through this video, there is no pressure for you to keep up with everyone else while you're watching this video. Work through it at your own pace, and if you don't understand something, go back and watch it again to see if that helps. If you really, really want to test yourself, then there are loads more examples waiting for you over on my website. Have a look at enlargement and for question one we'll be enlarge the black shape by sf3 that means scale factor three. and another way to explain scale factor three is to say that we are multiplying the shape by three we are making it three times bigger and then we have a center of enlargement one negative eight now we're not going to worry about these because all the center of enlargements are labeled on the diagram so for question one you see the little blue dot it is from the center one across and eight down. So the first thing we can talk about is that if we make the shape three times bigger, look at the measurements of the shape. Our rectangle is four across and one up. So we made it three times bigger, the one up would become three up. And the four across four times. So we'd have four, another four to make eight, and another four to make 12. So a one by four rectangle will become a three by 12 rectangle. And so I've enlarged the rectangle by scale factor three. Now, what about the center? What was that got? What did that have to do with it? And why did I draw the rectangle exactly where I drew it? Well, I've drawn the rectangle in a random place and I have ignored the center of enlargement one negative eight. So if I did this in the exam, I'd probably get one mark and I'd lose a couple of marks because this is not in the correct place. So how do we draw this larger rectangle in the correct place? So it's all about counting the distance between the center of enlargement and the corners of the shape. So let's take the bottom right corner. What is the distance here? Well, we would go one to the right and three up to get to the shape. Now, as well as the shape being three times bigger, these distances will also be three times bigger. So we're gonna multiply that distance by three. So we're gonna do one across and three up three times. So another one across and three up, and a third one across and three up. And now we have the coordinate of the bottom left of our brand new shape. Now, if you're confident, you can do the rest of it from there, but you can do this for every single corner. So now let's do the bottom left corner. This is one, two, three to the left and three up. So we're going to multiply that distance by three. So we've got one lot of three to the left and three up, two lots of three to the left and three up, and three lots of three to the left and three up. So I've repeated that three times and we've got a brand new coordinate. So now we can join these up and you'll see there is a distance of 12 between the two coordinates, just like the large shape before. Now we could do this for the last two edges, last two corners of our rectangle, but we know that it needs to go one upwards and we're times in that by three. So it's gonna go three upwards instead. So once we've got a couple of the vertices, a couple of the corners sorted out, you can then kind of guess where the rest is gonna go. But let's pick it nice and clear, let's color it in. So there is a new enlarged rectangle. We've started off with, let's call it rectangle A, and we've ended up with rectangle A dash, the dash meaning copy our answer. Moving on to question two. Again, choose a corner or a vertex of the shape and measure the distance. It's a distance of one, two, three, four to the left. Now question two says SF2, that's scale factor two. That means we are multiplying that distance by two. So instead of going four to the left, we're gonna go another four to the left, make it eight to the left altogether. And then there is our brand new bottom right corner. Let's choose another one. So choose one's gonna be easy to get to. Let's look at this one in the middle here. This is gonna be two up and four to the left. So we multiply that by two. We've already got our first set of two up and four to the left. Then we have our second set of two up and four to the left. And now we can start to see this, the shape take shape. So let's join those together and we can see we've got a height of four. Where in the original shape, it was only a height of two. So it's doubled in size. We could follow the same method and do the rest of the corners one by one. Perhaps you're about the work that you've done already, so there's plenty of room. Or you can use a bit of logic here. The bottom of the shape is one across in the original, one to the left. So times it by two, it'll be two to the left. And it goes up by one. So times it by two, it'll go up by two. It goes one to the left, so it'll be going two to the left, two up, times it by two would be four up. And then one to the right, 
times it by two, it would be two to the right, and so on. And again, you can use a bit of logic and multiplying the sides by two to make the brand new shape. Let's highlight that, make it really clear what we've done. And let's name them so we know which one's which. We've started off with shape B, let's call it. So we've ended up with shape B dash, the copy of shape B. Now you could have that shape B dash anywhere on the page, any location, and you get a mark for it because you've enlarged it correctly. But to get full marks, typically two or three marks, we'd have to be in the correct position exactly where I've drawn it. Moving on to question three. Again, find your center of enlargement. This time it's five, five. It's drawn on there for us. Choose a nearby corner of the shape and look at the distance. It's a distance of one. So what's the scale factor? The scale factor for question three is scale factor five. So if our original distance is a distance of one, multiply it by five, we get a distance of five. So we've already got one, two, three, four, five. And now we've got the location of a brand new top right corner. Let's choose another. Let's look at the bottom right corner. And from the center enlargement, it's one, two, three down and one to the left. So we can multiply this by five. We need to do that five times. We've already got our first three down, one to the left. So we have our second three down, one to the left. Our third three down, one to the left. Our fourth three down, one to the left. And our fifth three down and one to the left. And that is our brand new bottom right corner. So those two are joined up in our original. So let's join them up in the copy. So we can see it's quite large here. Now in the original, it was three. So times it by five, that should be a height of 15. Now we've done a couple of corners. We can just work the rest out using logics at the top it had a width of two times it by five it should be a width of ten then it was one down times it by five it's going to be five down then it was one to the right times it by five it's going to be five to the right then it's two down times it by five it's going to be ten down finally one across that'll be five across and there's our brand new shape it's quite large so let's color it in so we can really really clearly see the shape we want to make a clear distinction between the pink which is just the working out and the blue which is a boundary of the shape coloring it in is a good way to do that let's label them our original shape c and then the copy c dash moving on to question four again choose a place to start choose somewhere fairly close to the center of enlargement and then measure the distance so it's going to be two to the left and one up so what's the scale factor? For question four, the scale factor is three. Let's multiply it by three. We've already got our first set of two across, one up. So we have our second set of two across, one up, and our third set of two across, one up. So now we've got a brand new version of that vertex of the shape. Let's choose another one. Let's choose the one above it. So that's going to be two up and two to the left. So times it by three. We've already got our first one. We've got a second two up, two to the left, and our third, two up, two to the left. And then there's the next vertex. So those two are joined up in the original with a distance of one. So times it by three, they're joined up with a distance of three. Now I've got an idea of the location of the shape. We don't need to do this for each corner. Again, you can do if it's gonna help. Perhaps I'll do one more to show. So we go all the way across to the bottom right. We can see from the center of enlargement, it's three across. We times it by three, another three across and a third three across and there's our coordinate so let's start to build the shape so we've got one across and one down times it by three it'll be three across and three down then we have one across and three up times it by three it's going to be three across and then three times three is nine so it's going to be nine up then it's one across one down one across so times by three three across three down three across so you can see once we start drawing the shape it kind of speeds up a little bit as we get an idea of where it is let's color it in use pencil for this on the exam because we make a mistake you need to be able to rub it out and correct it so shape d has become d dash dash meaning it's the copy of shape d now moving on to the final question question five so let's choose the top right corner let's look at the distance it's one up and one, two, three, four across. The scale factor is scale factor two. So in our copy, we need two of those. We've already got the first set of one up, four across. So now our second set of one up, four across and draw the vertex. Let's choose one more. Let's choose the bottom right. So that one is three down and four to the left. So we want two sets of that. We want another three down and another four to the left. Draw the vertex. Now in the original, it's worth measuring this. In the original, it's a distance of four. So in the copy, it's gonna be a four. 
and another four, two fours. Scale factor two, twice as big. These shapes have a width of one, so times it by two, it would be a width of two. Take note of the direction as well, uh, it's going to the left. So in the copy, it's going to go to the left. And then it's a rectangle, so it's going to have parallel sides. That's color editing. And we can label as well. As usual, you know, the labeling is optional. It's just to show you which one's which, because I've drawn all over it. Shape E and shape E dash being the answer. In the exam, it would, it would give you a name for the original shape. It wanted you to be labeling it. Again, usually having multiple shapes in the same diagram if it was using naming terminology like this. So for the easy questions, we've done enlargement, taking a shape and making it larger. Now, the medium questions work the same way, but let's look at the scale factors. This time, question one says scale factor half. So what does that mean? So let's start off with the same method. So let's find a nearby coordinate on the shape, nearby corner of the shape. And let's look at the distance. It's two to the left and one down. Now it's scale factor half. So if the scale factor two, we will double that distance. Because at scale factor half, we're going to half that distance. So our new coordinate is not going to be two left and one down. We're going to half it. So two left becomes one left, and one down becomes a half down. So our new coordinate is actually very, very close to the center of enlargement. And for this one, I'm going to rub out my work, you know, just so you can clearly see where the new vertex is. Be very, very careful to have it halfway along. So let's choose the next one. So let's choose this vertex. So this one, it's three up and it's two to the left. So for scale factor half, we need to halve it. So half of three is one and a half, It'd be one and a half up, and half of two is one. It'd be one across. So it's gonna go, we're gonna draw the dot there. Again, make, be really, really careful to make sure it is actually halfway. So it is a distance of one and a half. So again, I'll rub out the working out here so we can see clearly what's happening. And let's join those two up. Now let's think of the distances. In the original, that was a distance of four. In the copy, it's now a distance of, we've got a half, a one and a half. So altogether, it's a distance of two. So what I want to kind of do now is look at the rest of the lengths and half them. Now we've got our start. So at the bottom, it is a distance of two, four, six, eight, 10. It's a distance of 12. Scale factor half, that will now be a distance of 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. At the edge, it's a height of 1, 2, 4, 6, 8. So a height of 8, half it will become a height of 4. So we've got a half, then 1, 2, and 3. So we're going to need another half. Going across, it's a width of 4. So half that would be a width of 2. Going down, it's a height of 4. So half that would be two. And we've only got one left, so we can join that up. Now you can see the two shapes do overlap. So be quite careful with the colouring here to make sure it's clear what our original and what our answer is. So let's do the answer in blue. And I could just not bother colouring in the original, to be honest, that'd be a good way of doing it. So we've got our original shape A and the copy A dash, which is actually overlapping shape A. It's kind of inside shape A. This, this can happen. Now you might think something odd here. This topic's called enlargement. It's got the word large in it, and that means things are getting larger. What's actually happened is our copy is smaller. So you might think we want to call it ensmallment. Now the reason why we don't call it ensmallment is because then we've got to remember two words. We have to remember what enlargement is and what ensmallment is. So to keep it simple, we just use one word to describe things getting smaller and things getting bigger. It might be a little bit confusing, but that's what's been chosen basically. So enlargement, easy questions, things are getting bigger. Medium questions, things are getting smaller. Fractional scale factors give you a smaller answer. So moving on to question two, same method. Let's choose a bottom left corner, the closest one. And let's look at the distance. It's a distance of two, four, and six. And what's the scale factor? It's scale factor half. So half of six is three. So the new corner is going to be a distance of three away, halfway along that line. Let's choose another. So what about the bottom right? That's going to be two, four, six, eight to the right and three, six up. So eight to the right and six up. So if we half that, we're not going eight to the right, we go four to the right. We won't go six up, we go three up. So the bottom of the shape, which I'm tracing now, becomes this line here. So now let's trace the rest of the shape. And again, let's rub out the working out so it's clear where our shape is in the moment. So using that line as a base, it's going to be a distance of four upwards on that line at both sides. So we have it, it'll be a distance of two upwards on both those sides. Then it's going to be four to the right, 
half that it's going to be two to the right now we'll start overlapping but it's going to be four upwards half of that is two upwards and then we can join up the last two corners to make a shape so again we can see this overlaps you might want to do something like you know rub out part of the original best you can if it's printed on the exam paper you might not be able to do that shading it in might be a good way to show where your answer is so we have our original shape b and our copy b dash moving on to question three again choose the nearest vertex vertex being corner nearest corner of the shape and measure it's going to be two down and four to the right now what's the scale factor well, this is going to be scale factor a third. So we need to divide these by three. This might be a little bit tricky. So let's do a bit of working out. So in our original, we're going two down and we're going four to the right. So we divide these by three. We want to go down by two thirds and then we want to go four thirds to the right. So I'm going to rub that line off now to make this really clear. Let's measure this out. So we're going two thirds down. And then we're going four thirds across. So a full one would be one third or three thirds. We need one third afterwards. So a new coordinate's going to be roughly here. So it's quite tricky to draw on this size of grid. Now, since that one was so tricky, do I want to do another coordinate? So why don't I just try and draw the rest of the shape here now? So the top of this shape is three across. And I've got the top left corner. So if we divide that by three for scale factor third, that'll be one across. Going down, that's a height of six. So divide that by three for scale factor third, it's going to be a height of two. So I can go a third down, then a full one, and then two thirds down to make two. At the other side, I'm going down by three. So if it's scale factor third, three divided by three is one. So we go a third down and then another two thirds down. Then at the bottom, we've got three, six, nine across. So scale factor third, let's do find a third of nine. Third of nine is three. I'm going to go three across. And at the top, we have three, six. So divide that by three. We've got two across. So we're going to go two thirds of the way across, and then another third. So that's where the shape's going to be. So let's shade it in. Now, that's quite smart, quite precise. Don't worry about too much about this on GCC exams. They'll tend to have these follow whole numbers. So we have our original, shape C, and our copy, C dash. Moving on to question four. So the nearest vertex is going to be here, I think. And that's going to be two, four, five up and two across. Now it's scale factor a quarter. So we need to find a quarter of that distance. So if the original is five up and two to the right, if I divide those by four, I need to do five quarters up and two quarters to the right. So that's for about the working out, leave a bit of space. Let's measure this out. So five quarters, four quarters will be a whole one, and then one more quarter. So I'm going a little bit into the square. And then two quarters, that's a half. So we're going halfway across. And that's going to be where our new coordinate's going to be. So given it's another difficult one, perhaps we should just draw the shape. So from the corner we've found, it's four up. A quarter of that, it'll be one up. Then it's four across, so that'll be one across. Then we've got eight across, which is going to be two across. Then we're going to have eight down, which is going to be two down. Four across, so will be one across. So we're going to just divide them by four each time, and then join up the last two vertices. So you can see roughly where this shape is going to go. It doesn't look quite right, so I'm going to make it a little bit shorter at the top, like this. And that should be more accurate. So we have shape D, our original, and D dash. The copy now looking at the final question find the nearest coordinate it's a distance of three now the scale factor is a third so a third of three is one so we're not going to go in three across we'll be going one across and that'll lead us to our brand new top corner of the square top right corner now squares are fairly simple so if a square is going to be six across all the sides will be six scale factor third so a third of six divided by three six divided by three is two so it's going to be a distance of two in each direction. So that's where a new square is going to go. So let's colour it in and let's label. Our original shape, let's call it E, has become the copy E dash. So moving on to the hard questions. With the easy questions, we looked at enlargements with positive scale factors where a shape got bigger. With the medium questions, we looked at fractional scale factors where the shape got smaller. Now, the hard questions, we have negative scale factors. So what do they mean? So we start off the same way. So identify a vertex close to your center of enlargement 
and measure the distance. So for question one, it's going to be one to the left and two up. Now the scale factor is negative two. So we're going to multiply that by negative two. Now if that was multiply that by two, what would happen is we would continue and say that we've got one set of one to the left, two up. We need a second set of one to the left and two up. And then that's where we draw our brand new coordinate. Now with a negative scale factor, think, just think about it for a second. If you want to go one to the left, if it's negative, you want to go the other direction. So we're going to go one to the right. Or in the case of scale factor of two, we're going to go two to the right. So we're going the opposite direction. Then we want to go two up. But multiply that by scale factor negative two. Two times two is four, but we're not going to go four up. We're going to go in the opposite direction and go four down. And then that is where a new coordinate is going to be. So with negative scale factors, what is happening is that we are drawing the shape in the opposite direction direction so now we've done our first coordinate let's look at the second we've done the bottom right let's do the bottom left this is going to be one two three four to the left and two up so if we multiply that by scale factor negative two we're not going to go two up we're going to go four down and we're not going to go four to the left we're going to go eight to the right and so this is where a new coordinate is going to be. Now, again, let's rub out the working out so it's clear what we've drawn so far. And let's join up the two brand new coordinates. So they correspond to the bottom of this shape. And just check the distance. It should be a distance of six if the original is a distance of three. Now, from this point onwards, we'd start to draw the rest of the shape. So if we want to go one up at both sides, multiply it by two. That would be two up. If it's negative, we're going to go two down instead. Then you want to have coming in one into the middle like this, then one up, one across, and one down. So that's going to be multiplied by two, and it's going to be pointing downwards rather than pointing upwards. So it's going to be down here. So let's have a look at our new shape, our original and the copy. We can see it's definitely twice as big, but you can see it's pointing in the opposite direction. The shape A has become a copy of shape A. Now let's look at question two. This is also scale factor negative two. So choose a, a coordinate close to it, a corner close to it, and a distance is down two. So if it's scale factor negative two, we'll do the opposite. Times it by two to get four, but don't go down four. We're going to go up four for our new coordinate. Let's choose another one. Let's choose the top left. This is going to be two to the left and two down. So by scale factor negative two, two to the left, two down, will become four to the right and four up to get our new coordinate. So let's join those two up. That's distance of two times it by two. It's now a distance of four. And again, now we can start to draw the rest of the shape. So if you want to go two down on both sides, multiply it by negative two, it's going to be four up. And then it's a square, so make sure everything's nice and parallel. So let's erase some of the working out there, colour in our shapes. We can see that the original shape B is now twice as big to make shape B dash, the copy of shape B, but we can see it's on the other side of the center of enlargement. So negative scale factors, the shape's still getting bigger if it's a number that's larger than one, but it's on the opposite side. You can also mix this up. You could have a fractional scale factor that's negative. So scale factor negative half would make it half the size, but again, it'd be the opposite side of the center of enlargement. Moving on to question three, we can see to the top left corner, it's a distance of two. So what's the scale factor? For question three, it's scale factor negative two. So we're not going to go two up. We're going to go four down for a new coordinate. Now it's important to rub this out because we've totally drawn over our original shape. It's hard to see. And the one we worked on was the top left. So let's look at the bottom left now. The bottom left is a distance of two down. So times that by scale factor negative two, it will be two down. It will be four up for a brand new coordinate. In the original shape, this was a height of four. In a new shape, it's now a height of eight. Now we could draw the rest. In our original, we'd go one to the right. So multiply that by negative two. One to the right becomes two to the left. So we're increasing the size and we're flipping the direction. And a height of four is going to become a height of eight. So we have our original shape and we have the copy. I've drawn all over it so you can't see what the original was. So let's label it. So we had shape C, the original, 
and C dash the copy. Same thing for question four. You can also measure in diagonals as well. So we can see that there is a diagonal one upwards kind of distance to the square. And it's scale factor negative one. So it means it's going to be exactly the same size, just in the opposite direction. So if it's diagonal in that direction to the top right, then I want to go to the bottom left for the copy. Same thing in the other direction. It's one to the bottom right. So in the copy, it'll be one to the top left. So we've dealt with this side of the square. Then we want to go two to the right. So in the copy, we go two to the left. Again, we're not making it larger because we're multiplying by a scale factor of one. It's going to stay the same size. And then join it up to make the rest of the square. So let's get rid of a bit of the working out. It's nice and clear the difference between these two shapes is. So we have our original shape, D, and the copy, D dash. And this is the really important point. You can have negative one scale factors where the shape is exactly the same size, it's just on the opposite side of the centre of enlargement. And these kind of enlargements do look very similar to often rotations, and for this one, for reflections as well. Now looking at the last one, it's scale factor negative three. This one's a bit easier because the centre of enlargement is actually also one of the corners of the shape. That's a distance of zero. So we know that corner is going to stay in the same place. Now in the original shape, we're going to go to the left. So scale factor negative three would give us six to the right for our next coordinate. Then we want to go two up. So scale factor negative three, that would be six down. And now we can draw the rest of our square. We can see we're going two to the right, which becomes six to the left. And then we can make sure it's all parallel because it's a square shape. Let's call them in. We have the original and we have the copy. So we have shape E and the copy E dash. So we can see a variety of negative enlargements here from at the start. There's quite a distance from the center of enlargement of the shape. So it appears on the opposite side. So there are ones where they're quite close, like question three, or very, very close, like question four, or even joined up to each other, like in question five.